Hi, this is Alvaro Souza. Today we're going to be talking about the editor. This is the second tutorial in the series. We're going to be focusing on the map generator. I'm going to go through this pretty quick. We're going to create a large map. And to make a map using the map generator, you click the map gen. You're going to see a bunch of dials on this side. And this modifies the size of each element and how sporadic it spreads out and how large it spreads out. If you're making a smaller scenario, you want to adjust these numbers down. It's going to take you a little while, depending on the size of your map, to figure out what is the right combination of it. So we're just going to go straight down the list over here. So beginning at the top, the landmass count is how many places it's going to put a landmass. Uh, the map border buffer has to do with how close land is placed to the side of the map. The landmass size is each count has a certain radius of of hexes. So if you put the landmass size pretty small, you'll have like these small land areas like islands. If you put them larger, they'll be big masses. As masses overlap, they create mountain ranges. Uh, land spread chance that determines uh, how it wiggles, and then weather smooth is after the the land map is generated how the weather system is wiggly on it also. The lower it is, the more smoother it is. I'd suggest keeping it at about 10%. So we're gonna generate a map right now. So this is the map that it generates. You can see kind of distinctly all the individual land masses. It created little lakes and everything. If you don't like the map, just click generate again and it'll redo and it'll create a second map. And you can keep doing this until you find something that you like. So I'm going to stick with, let's see here, this one looks pretty neat. Okay. Next button is generate force. You can adjust this very similarly, how many, uh, how many force that you want, the size of them, and the spread, which is kind of like the jiggle. Generate jungle, swamp and marshes, and generate deserts. You don't have to use all these buttons, but the options are there for you. And this is the weather zone. So if you notice it's over here, it's because there's a mountain range. So it kind of adjusts for a mountain range to make it more wintry where there's uh, mountains, even in a tropical zone like this. Now let's turn this off. Next, we're going to go to randomize and fill. If you zoom in on the map, you notice that all the tiles are the same, even the land tiles. So when you randomize and fill, it'll change all the land tiles over here. It'll add borders around them. Now this is not perfect. It has to be filled out. On uh, terrain, this row of mountains, you can actually add, you can change this yourself and add a little bit more feature by making like a mountain range, for example, like this. Where's that end cap? There it is. So it's a three mountain range or so, and you can extend out as far as you want. Uh, you could change any of the terrain that you want. Like that, put a swamp wherever you want, a desert. There's some special um, terrains over here that uh, it does not generate, but you can use like this little oasis or, or just the volcano or the mountain with the water over there. They even have jungle mountains if you want to add that or forest mountains, but the map generator only uses the basic tiles. All right, let's go back here. Next, they're going to be create rivers. I haven't got this down quite right yet. Uh, but what it does do, it generates them. It tries to go from like a higher elevation to a lower elevation. And sometimes like this river, it, it did a pretty good job. And you could edit them using the river over here. With the river, you have two ways to do this. You can either select the tile and put it on the map, which is really a big pain in the butt. The way I usually do it is I use the draw toggle on and I could start from a position and I hold the right mouse button down and it starts and then just keep dragging the mouse and it draws along the side of the hex borders the river that I want. If I mess up, I can hit the toggle over here, the control toggle. It'll turn it off. And as long as the first one is selected, I can erase the tiles. Hit the toggle for control again on, and now I can go back to drawing. Don't go too fast or you'll mess up. But it looks for where the mouse is closest to the edge here of the hexagons. Okay, let's see here, locations. This creates all the locations of the map. They will all be under the first player, which is this kingdom, player number zero. 
It'll create them at random. It will not create capitals. It does take some time. I just see it's all the first kingdom. What you will have to do is go in here using edit map and selecting location and changing who controls them. If this toggle is on, whoever you select to control them will also be the owner. Or I should say, I'm sorry, you select the owner and if the toggle's on, the controller's the same. If you toggle this off, let's say you go to this one, it'll change the controller, uh, the owner, but not the controller. But normally most of these scenarios, you wanna make them both the same. After that, you can hit create adventures. There are two ways to do it. You could do it uh, automatically, or you can go to edit map and adventure. And I know there's not much space. And what you could do is use adventure R, which is random. And how you add adventures and subtract is you hold the control button down and just tap the map. If you want to remove an adventure, you hold the control button down and right mouse click on the map. Control plus left mouse click adds it. Control plus right mouse click removes it. And you could add any level that you want over here. But let's remove all these for now. Go to the map generator and just generate adventures. And you can see it populates the map with low, medium, and highs. With the random, how it works is that in the early part of the game, it'll generate more low adventures and slowly go to mediums. And then as it goes on, then it'll be all random where it includes high adventures as well. Porches toggle turns off all the adventures. So now we're going to go to create roads. Uh, this actually does a pretty good job, but it's not perfect because you have these junctions over here. So if you want to edit these and uh, make it prettier, you can, or you can keep it the same. I've tried to find many ways to make this simpler, but I can't. But it creates the roads pretty nicely and connects the uh, most of the locations. Sometimes you have a long area like this that's far away. You might have to create a road for it. Lastly, if you are into pain, you can create all the individual kingdoms. Add more items, add more spawns and create your own spawns, create your own army templates. But if you want the easy way, just click load default and it'll load all the defaults from the realm of air day. And then you could just modify them like here are all the kingdoms. Uh, and that's basically it uh, for this section of map generation. The help file over here tells you how things work with the controls and the right or left mouse button. I tried to make this as intuitive as possible and that they all kind of link up and match up to their the same kind of function. It's really hard to do this in an editor where you have so much stuff in it. If you have any questions, you know to find me on Discord. And um, that's about it. Thanks a lot.